Good morning. Boy, do we have an exciting video for you today. We are just leaving our son's place in Vancouver. We got to spend about a week with both boys there. Awesome. So good. And today we are still in the Vancouver area, but we were heading over to our friends Dan and Christina's shop where they have been busy building vans for the last year. I think they just celebrated their first year anniversary at that location. Yeah, we first met them, I think it was three years ago. Yeah, I think so. We were in Bend, Oregon in the summer and we were in our old van. And for those that you know, our old van had that very, very colorful vinyl wrap on it. And they recognized our van and reached out to us and went up hooking up and having a beer in Bend and kind of hit it off. Real, real good time. We took a look at their van. They were in a home built van then as well. Yeah, so they, had, they, they were traveling full time for a while in a sprinter that they had built themselves and we went to look at it and i was it was the first time i'd seen the mountain bikes on on um on drawer slides like we have in this van that's where i first I, it planted I, the seed yeah planted the seed um but i was very impressed with the their their build that they had and kind of stayed in touch off and on hadn't seen them for three years and then recently they reached out and said hey guys we see you're back in oregon um we are actually in vancouver washington which is right across the river from portland and they have a shop and they're building and selling vans and so we got to go meet with them real quick the other day but didn't have too much time but we're heading back there today to check out their shop maybe kind of do video of what they're doing their story is very interesting. They're a mm -hmm. young couple and where they came from before building vans and how they got here is kind of interesting. So I thought it might be interesting to kind of meet the builders, check out the shop. Yeah. And last time we were there, um, they have a Unimog and I got to drive it, which was super cool. He was like a little kid in a candy store. I want store. one so bad. That's <laughs> so cool. <laughs> That's the whole reason he wants to go back here. Yeah. So meet us over at the shop and let's meet the builders. Hey guys. Hi. Hi, how are you? Good. This is looking good. Oh, look at it. This is it, babe. This is what you fell in love with last time. Yeah, we'll include a clip of me driving the beast maybe at the end of the video. Yeah, so this will. is Dan and Christina from Hello. Rome Overland Vehicles. And I think we mentioned that we met you guys three years ago, but we didn't tell them anything about you. Come here, puppy. This Come is here. the shop oh, dog. This is our shop dog. This is Charlie. He's still in training. Oh, he's so <laughs> cute. We met them three years ago, they reached out to us, and I'll let them tell the story of how that came about and how they went from being a high stress job to traveling around in the custom sprinter to now building and selling custom sprinters and maybe what the future is. So go ahead guys. Take it wow. away. We started watching uh, Carry On Vagabond years ago and it was just, we started getting into the idea of traveling full time. And I was an air traffic controller for 12 years it's about a 25 year career, so I was about halfway through. And we started just following other YouTubers that were into it, and it was like, hey, this looks like fun. One thing led to another, and we've been building vans for a couple of years prior to that. And then, yeah, just kind of got the bug, quit the job, sold the house, sold the car. Sold cars, everything. And yeah, started traveling. We did that for all of 2019 into 2020. When the world and came to a stop. We all know what happened in March of 2020, which we were winding down the trip then anyways. We kind of planned to do about a year. Um, and so we ended up in Texas with family that lived there um, and lasted about a week and realized that this is going to go on for a while. So we leased a shop and started building out vans there. And as I got close to the year mark there, we decided we were ready to come back home to the Pacific Northwest. So yeah. that's where we are now is in Vancouver and building out the custom vans, uh, have the Unimog. Just I, have, like, I have a question. Oh, yep. When when we first met you, the Sprinter van that you built out, was that your first van? No, that was the was third. Third van. Third van. Yeah. yeah. So you so, were building vans and selling them before van life was a thing. We got into it because I, we were in uh, Death Valley in our Subaru and we were traveling 
and it was a super bloom, the biggest one that they had in 10 years. And we didn't even know. Oh, yeah, we saw that. Yeah. Yeah. 2017. We were there. We were there. Yes. That's what started me on it because we drove through there and we didn't have any of our camping gear. We were coming back from Arizona or something. And it was incredible. We started talking Mm -hmm. to the park rangers and they were all freaking out about it because it was just. It was just out of the blue. Mm-hmm. And so I'm like, that's it. I want a van. And this was before there was any van builders on the market. So I started researching, what do I do? How do I do this? And I'm like, I can just build a van. So we started looking into Sportsmobile. And there was one other company at the time, I think Outside Vans here in Portland. And they were it. two years out. And they were also close to $200,000. So um, we've built a lot of things in the past. So I started researching about a year's worth of research. And finally, we were like, Let's totally build our own. So we did. And that was back when you could buy old used mm-hmm. sprinters and, and pro masters for cheap because there's old painters' vans or electricians' vans. Right. So right. we got our first one, had 105,000 miles on it. We built it out. And our first trip, like four days into it, I was like, yep, I want to do this. Us. I was like, this is it. So then we sold our first one and we had so many people calling us and emailing us, can I have one? Can I have a van? Can I have one of your vans? So Can you build one for us? Which we had never really even thought about yeah, I think even building for other minds. people so that just one thing led to another and now we're on i don't even know how many vans we've done but eight eight and nine i think is what we're starting and about how long is the build process now that you're in this new location how long does one uh, build take a longer one like this one um on average would be about four months yeah, uh, and a lot with, depends on the supply chain. Exactly. Like right now, things are yes. pretty slow, Without right? Without COVID, it was two to three months, but okay. now it's like three to four. Um, but a lot of this is all, all custom. So uh, we're setting up new suppliers up here, CNC companies, new metal places we're buying stuff from, the wood suppliers. So now that we've kind of gotten all that lined up, now it's kind of streamlined and we're getting back into the flow of things. This van will be done hopefully this month. Client will come and pick it up. And we do vans two ways. We do vans where... A client will bring us their van, and like this one is a used Sprinter. He drove it up from Phoenix, and then we do ones like there's one out there where the business will buy the van, and we'll turn around and f- fix it up and sell. We just call those spec vans, and these ones were booked out over a year where clients bring us vans. Those ones kind of in between we do vans, and typically one of those vans when we're doing them just through social media will get sold before we're even done. So people will reach out, hey, is that van available? Can I can I have that van? And we're like. Yeah, it's yours. So we do those kind of what the market's buying. So we'll build it out to what people really want in them. So what um, about the Unimog? Tell me more about the Unimog. Yeah. About the Unimog? <laughs> They're you safe. mean your next vehicle? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you the I Unimog. see where this is going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's the story with that? And where's that, that headed? That oh, stemmed yeah. from a trip to Alaska. We both grew up in Alaska. And we were sitting at the edge of a creek in, in our Sprinter. the one we were living in on the year trip. We, we lived in a 170 Sprinter, which is this length. It's 22 feet long. And it was a two-wheel drive version, and the creek was just enough to where I was like, yeah, I'm not pushing. I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna drive my house across that raging yeah. water. So we were sitting there, and one of those came and drove through the creek like it was just, just a puddle in a Locked parking us. lot. Yeah. Sitting there. Drove over you. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Splashed you in the face on the way by. <laughs> Kicks in, in your face as you went by. <laughs> and we saw them fade yeah. off into the distance, and I just I shed a tear and I said, I want one of those. So we were up there for two months. About a month later, we were at another camping spot farther in Alaska, and we saw them in their Unimog, the same one that drove across the we river. We stalked them like we stalked you. When yeah. We yeah. <laughs> Basically okay. went and started sniffing around, and it was two aerospace engineers, and they had both spent a year or so converting one over into a camper. I fell in love with it. But you're doing van builds now, but is that kind of where you're headed? More of the adventure overland vehicles? That's that really kind? what I want to do. We stopped our books at next summer for vans. So we're booked out till next summer doing vans. And eventually that, right now we have that back. That's actually an ambulance. And it's just got a bed and a heater in it right now and insulation. So bare minimums of what we need right now. Mm-hmm. But eventually the whole entire back is going to come off and we're going to do custom composite foam. It's like a um, uh, habitat that's fully sealed, three to four inch composite foam materials on the outside walls, um, really lightweight. You can build anything you want in there. Uh, there's a couple companies, Total Composites, Box Manufacturer. I'm so, really intrigued with those. I think, you know, we, we love our van, we love both our vans, but you know, there's always new and better ways to do things. Mm-hmm. And no matter what we do to that van or any van you're in, whether you're, if you're in hot, extreme hot or extreme cold, 
you're still in a metal box. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, and to think about a lightweight composite structure that you can put on, if you just get the commercial ProMaster flatbed, flatbed yeah, type vehicle. Chassis weight. cabs. Yeah. And, so yes. maybe, maybe in the future we'll be That's, uh, meeting up with you guys sometime. And <laughs> It'll be fine. We've been the wheels are always turning, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I love our van, but it's, I mean, in the future, I, I think about Central and South America, and I, I definitely want something with clearance yes. and lighter weight. Mm. Um, no and wood I, or less. Yeah, wood and I like, and one. some of the things I want to talk to you about is, you know, I want to take a quick look in, in both vans, but I'm really interested in, you know, some of the things you're doing to, that's just, you know, maybe being more innovative with, with materials, getting away from all wood or, and trying to find lighter, better ways to do things or still have the structural strength that you need. So like we, you were showing me some of that stuff earlier and I thought, this is really cool stuff. Yeah. So we've been building vans. We do a lot of our own custom parts that have fabricated steel, aluminum. Um, we weld all of our own bed frames out of steel. I do aluminum framing for all my electrical components. Ideally, everything would be aluminum and composite materials. I want to get away from wood completely. People love it. They look amazing when it's all said and done, but there's a lot of uh, downsides working with wood. The shrinking and swelling with the temperature variations, the durability, the water, the all of that. So these are some of the things that we've been working on for the last, I don't know, year or two, mm -hmm. is a lot of honeycomb composite materials. So it's a like a really lightweight composite material. I can't even tell I have it in my hand. It's like a piece of paper. The difference in weight, I mean, that thing's probably a fifth of the weight of a sheet of plywood when it's all said and done. But now this has got a flatter surface on it. Is that something the same thing? Yeah, so that one's actually covered. So this one actually has, this is a pickleball paddle, but this is just kind of an example of the, the substrate that's on the top of it. So this one's completely finished. What they'll do with this is they actually just put a vinyl wrap on here. So. Could you imagine a kitchen cabinet with this? And then you can just put a wrap on there and just be whatever you want it to be. You can rip it off six months from now and put a different vinyl on there. So this is this is from a company and they'll finish it off. They'll put a handle and they'll put their logo on this. So this will take kind of whatever you want to put on there. You can put high pressure laminate vinyl on there. It's still a little flexible. You can put wood on there. So really it's kind of a... What is or, it? You can coat it with fiberglass and do like a resin on there and do like what a boat does. How is it cost comparing? It's about four to five times the cost of a sheet of plywood, but the weight savings and the durability alone is totally worth it. Well, four to five times the cost normally. Previously. But not right yeah, now. yeah, not right yeah. now. Right now, this sheet might be plywood. cheaper yeah, than plywood. Right? So you can just double right now. <laughs> well, if you're only using, how many sheets of plywood do you use in a van build? Four to five sheets of plywood so, for so, so, a yeah. short wheelbase. So, yeah, you're not looking at a lot of a so difference. Of, yeah. But a couple hundred bucks. Yeah, a couple mm -hmm. hundred bucks when it's all said and done. And definitely the, the potential is there. Oh, what is, this that feels like is, stone almost. It's a cement board. So really lightweight, but it's it's impervious to any sort of water. So if you're doing um, subfloors in vans or buses or anything like that, that's uh, they use that in a lot of boat stuff. So so is all this from the marine industry or what? A lot what? of it is okay. really like, a, this is from the aerospace industry, but a lot of this now is getting used in marine. So like, you can get them pre-scored. So if you have like a part of a boat, you can actually like bend that and then they'll coat this in sheets of fiberglass and resin wow. and make this an actual waterproof um, part. A lot of the stuff that we find in quality, the boat industry has figured out a lot of yeah. this stuff already. They've been doing stuff in the harshest environments in the world for years and years and years. So when I look to find the best quality products, a lot of them come from the boat industry, which is just, yeah. they've done the research. That's what, you know, where our van was built at the Humble Road Shop with George, and that's what George is, I mean, his background is more in with the marine stuff, and, and so there's a there's so much marine industry built into our van because, well, for one, it has to be high quality when you're out in the middle of the ocean because you're in the middle of the ocean. Mm -hmm. You know, they, you got to be, you got to be um, very well built and, and durable and long-lasting and reliable when you're in the ocean because you can't, you can call a tow truck, but it's a big white boat with red stripes, and, and <laughs> they're not happy that they got to come 100 miles offshore because, you know, anyway. So I think what I'd like to do is kind of take a quick look at the van yeah. and, and show me where you might use this as compared to wood and yeah. what you're kind of doing. Yeah, totally. Let's take a peek inside. Yeah, this is the van we're building for a client now. We lived in a van that was this size and almost this exact layout. We lived in it for over a year. 
Um, we sold a 2,000 square foot house and we moved into 80 square feet. So this was kind of the layout that we did. His is a little bit different. So we have a little bit of a longer bench. Um, this will have locking compartments with the locking safe so you can keep all our stuff. That seat swivels, the driver's seat on the Sprinter will swivel around. Nice. So he wants to be able to bring his mom with him. Um, so she'll go on camping trips with him randomly. So this will actually turn into a full bed. So we're okay. getting a full, um, uh, what do you call it, pad mm -hmm. sewed at a seamstress right now. Kitchen cabinets, these are ones that we're working with CNC companies to get made. So easily, we can duplicate them easily. Because everything we've done in the past, we just do all custom. So this is a Baltic birch cabinet grade. And eventually I'd like to get into, with that honeycomb composites, do cabinets, because it's really lightweight, really strong. Get in, get away from the wood completely. Mm -hmm. This one kind of went the beach vibe. They love the beach, so we went with like a lighter flooring he wanted. We're gonna do a lighter pine ceiling on here. Uh, max air fan, pneumatic air conditioning, 12 volt AC system. Talk to me about the AC system. Is this your first time using the 12 volt? I'm curious yeah, it's about the that. first the 12 volt AC, and I really like it. Um, it's really low profile. The power usage is really good too. On 400 amp hours of power or uh, batteries, we all do lithium, just uh, battle born. It'll run for six to eight hours is what their wow. estimates are. So you can get a lesser of a battery bank and still run it for quite a while. So we'll see. I think uh, they're a pretty new company mm -hmm. and I think their product is still, there's still a couple things that they need to tweak to make it a more for the masses for, mm -hmm. like luckily we're pretty handy so when we go to install it i can fix a couple of things that were production wise weren't done quite right mm -hmm. this one's got a full walk-in shower they wanted an actual walk-in shower we're doing a airhead composting toilet how about we go around the back and they can show us what uh, some of your thoughts are yeah on what you're doing there yeah okay i'll meet you around there this is the garage so same with dave and irene it's a lifted bed bed frame sits on these rails which are actually mounted at the frame of the van and what material are those rails that the rails are steel and the bed frame we do is steel um it's a thinner steel it looks like a lot it's actually they're both back here um these rail systems you see right there oh that's two bed frames sitting right there okay it looks like a lot of metal but they're really thin walled but they're just built structurally with a bunch of supports, so you don't need any vertical supports underneath it, which is nice for just keeping everything open. This kind of gives you an idea of how big the inside area is going to be. This like is, the honeycomb stuff, is that something that you had CNC or yeah. what they, is it called CNC with wood? Yeah, CNC. There's a company here in our little shop area. Um, I kind of went in with an idea because what we found is when we were in really cold weather, I needed to get warm air back to the water tank so if we we're out skiing for a weekend or we're somewhere i need to bring hot air from the east bar heater into here to make sure the lines don't freeze make sure it just stays like so it doesn't damage anything because you get a frozen pipe and a pex line that's going to explode and pour water everywhere so this is kind of an idea a couple vans we've worked on different designs uh this is kind of tying it in so we're doing honeycomb designs kind of tie in with some of those panels that we've been working with so eventually all of this will be not wood so ideally this is kind of what we're working on now this is aluminum framing this one's steel right now just because i needed the strength on this one but this is all the electrical compartment here so this will hold all the batteries this will hold the bus bars this will hold the victron inverter this will hold all of the dc um, switches all of that so this idea of being a really lightweight aluminum frame and then having say like a honeycomb composite paneling dropping into pieces like that mm -hmm. so you can change the design you want you can put laminate vinyls on there you can put woods on there all sorts of different designs so getting to the idea of having really lightweight really strong aluminum is kind of the the idea same with upper cabinets I could build it all out of really lightweight aluminum and then put some sort of surface material on there or even on the inside that's the goal our last two vans we did aluminum cabinets for the uppers so they were the shorter wheelbase van so they were five feet long cabinets and they were all aluminum and then they had doors that slid in there really nicely and i really liked those 
they still have their own downsides though too so we're really working to try to find the uh the best solution yeah. yeah but that's good though like every time we build one we find out what works what doesn't work we get to talk to clients and see what they like what they don't like um so yeah every van we've ever sold we still keep in contact with all the clients which is perfect for us currently you've been building the vans yeah. but i know it sounds like maybe you're leaning towards maybe more of the overland expedition type vehicles in the future yeah i i love the vans and i were booked out over a year doing vans but i wanted something a little bit more off-road capable and we've done four-wheel drive sprinters we've done trucks we've done so this like uh, happened in alaska we met the people and chased them down and so we actually imported this one from germany so this is the unimog and i want to try to make a unimog that's more north american market so in a sprinter or the pro master you get in and you can drive across the country really comfortably so you get in you get air conditioning nice radio good comfy seats that's what i want to do with this so we'll tear off this back it's just a seal back on there now it was an ambulance do the composite foam work we were talking about and then we've already started working on this one a little bit ripping out the old sound deadening i've installed range rover seats in there on the passenger side we'll swap out the seats we'll put in a radio i'm going to add an aftermarket air conditioning um put a nice center console in there just make it more comfortable we've added cameras on it but also you're looking at just unimog you're looking at maybe just some of the commercial van type flatbed vehicles. we're trying to find the perfect chassis this is one extreme of the overlanding mm -hmm. side of things and then the sprinters and the pro masters are the other extreme of right it. i'm trying to find something in between right so yeah something where you get you know some clearance and four-wheel drive maybe even i mean even some of like the double dual suspension yeah. type vehicles and put the composite box on it that Which you can go anywhere yeah awesome because so. most of like a lot of people in north america they're most of it's probably going to be camping in here but once in a while they want to have the capabilities to like for us i would like something like that because once in a while i want to go totally but the majority of the time i'm not wanting to drive into the state parks and i you know giant yeah unimog. i mean i kind of wanna well yeah, yeah maybe i do wanna <laughs> there's nothing fancy in this one right now this is just a, a very basic build out bed insulation and a gear we've been so busy building other people's vans that we haven't had time to build our own stuff so when you put you're talking about um putting a shell on this thing you will make it so someone could stand up in here yes. is that okay because yeah. right now it's only five foot five on the inside okay and i'm six one and that doesn't doesn't work uh, yeah all. well thanks guys appreciate the tour and uh, hearing about your story um i guess the only thing i would say or ask is if people wanted to get in touch with you or now you guys do occasional videos on youtube and you have instagram and i just tell everyone what that yeah, is yeah it's rome overland vehicles um, we have a YouTube and we'll do videos on the vans that we build and we'll do videos on the Unimog and um, we did some travel videos as well. We're so far behind on any of those, but um, work kind of gets in the way of that stuff, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. And this is, this is enjoyable too. Like this has been a dream to be building this stuff. So yeah, mm -hmm. Rome Overland Vehicles. We got Instagram as well. Anything else? I think that's what the YouTube is under. I think and that's the, the website, website too. Mm -hmm. yeah. oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. Well, appreciate taking time yeah. today and showing us yeah. around. They're doing some really neat stuff. I'm really looking forward to seeing a completed project with maybe that habitat, square yep. habitat thing. Yeah, I like the idea of that kind of a cross between, or kind of the meet in the middle between the extreme overlander vehicle and the van, that kind of the in the middle and not just a, a metal box or a van, but actually designed yeah the space with the composite material. I think there's someone to watch. I think so too, and I, I'm I'm looking forward to the, if they get their current van done before we head south for the winter we'll go back up and do a tour of it and see you know what they're doing but i'm really curious to see about the, the honeycomb lightweight stuff in the future yeah. vans that sort of thing so, me too um, um if you guys are interested in stopping by and taking a look they are having an open house august 28th at 5 p.m and please rsvp here if you would like to attend i guess we'll see you down the road carry, carry on, on. Good luck. God, it does. You look good up there, babe.
You know we're probably gonna have to get one of these now. Oh yeah, <laughs> the carry-on rig number three. He did look really good in there. Oh, here he comes. Whoa, too fast, too fast. 